Okay, so before we do another example, let me just go through uh, a couple of pace of uh, a couple of things. So the first one is that on the previous lecture and the previous example, we we'll look at a design on a plane. So basically for two dimensions. So let's see what would happen if you need to consider now a stiffener with panels, but in three dimensions. So let me do a quick sketch over here. So, so we have here one stiffener. All right, so this, so this, and let us assume now there's another one coming in this way. Okay, okay. something like this. Oops, doesn't matter, but let's say, so this will be here one panel. And then here you can have another panel now let's say we have another panel over here and let's say we have another panel over here okay so you kind of see this is like three dimensions and now let's say we have a load over here so the load we have one component on this one one component over here and let's say one component over here all right so overall our load will look probably something like this okay so I mean it's very easy to understand it from the figure now let me just write it down so if the line of action of a load P is three dimensional, so basically it has two different components. The line of action of a load P is two dimensional, it must act at the intersection of So let's see, let's see of two web panels. Okay, so basically same as before, we said that one load, you need to have one member to carry this direction, another one to carry this direction. So in 3D, you need to have one member in each of the 3D dimensions to carry part of the load. Basically, it's the same principle, okay? But I just wanted to uh, make sure that is clear. All right, next point I wanted to make clear today is that let's say you have a structure, and this is kind of the example we're going to do next, but let's say you have a, a structure this way. All right, so let's say this two flanges of stiffener, and you have a shear force. V. Okay, so this could go straight, but I'm going to do that it can go, let's say, this way. Because that's the example we're going to do. So, what would be the average shear force, the, the average shear flow? So, this is the average shear flow would be equal to what? V over the depth of this, which would be over here H. Okay, so this will be the shear force, shear flow, sorry. And now let's say we have a similar problem. 
but this time we're gonna look at what would be the moment created by a shear flow. So momentum of a shear flow. All right, so over here, images were bigger. So let's say we have a center. Let's see out here. Okay, a stiffener or any member, which will be the center of rotation. And here, it doesn't matter which direction you do it, but just so that we get a positive moment. Let's say this would be Q12. Well, this is point one, this is point two. Okay, imagine like this is one and this is two, okay? All right. So now, you can say here would be perpendicular. This is the whole trick. And now if we take one differential element over here, This is will be the S, so we start from here. This is S. Okay. And this is a distance P. So if we take moments about point O, so I'm going to start on this page. So let's say I take moments about point O. positive counterclockwise. So what do you get over here? You will get M12 go counterclockwise. This one will go clockwise, so it will be negative, minus. So what is the value of the force, of this force? Will be integral of Q12 dS. This will give you the total value of the force. Okay, remember shear is, shear flow is a force per unit length. So if you multiply the shear flow by the length, you get the force. And now what would be the arm? It should be here P. Okay, so this will be the arm for the moment. So from this equation, you get that M one, two, the moment created would be equal to what? Would be equal to Q12, that would be constants times P ds. All right. Okay, so now from the figure, Imagine this is a differential area element. So what will you have? We can say that dA would be approximately equal to what? If this is a triangle and this is perpendicular, this would be what? P would be the length of the base times dS would be the height divided by 2. Okay? So from this equation here, maybe you see what's happened. We are looking at PDS would be equal to what? 2DA. And now if we integrate, what are you gonna have? We're gonna have that. P D S is equal to two times the area, and the area would be this whole area over here. So if I substitute this this P D S into here, we're gonna get that M one two will be equal to two A Q. 
want to. And I'm sure you have studied this one, this equation in structure one. But just want to make sure that it's fresh. Okay, so I think now we are ready to do an example. Okay, so maybe before we start the example, let's go another ref uh, refresher. So what is a statically determinated problem? So that means that problem can be solved can be solved using only the equations summation of forces equal to zero and summation of moments equal to zero. Okay? So what would be a statically undeterminated problem is one that you need the static equations summation of forces equal to zero and summation of one moment plus some Additional equations, okay? All right. So here we go. So the example I'm going to be doing is the fun one. So example two. So let's say we have a structure which is going to look like this okay let me have another one over here okay so this will be one two three four, five, and six. So here we have three panels. So one panel will be here, Q1. Let's assume it goes this way. Then we have here Q2. And this will be here, Q3. Okay, so this, if you want one flange, 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 one stiffener, and three panels. One, two, and three. Okay, and this is subjected to a shear force over here. Vx, if you want to call it, equal to 12,000 newtons. And another shear force here on the y direction equal to 8,000 newtons. Now we need to define some uh, dimensions. So let's say all the dimensions would be in millimeters. So this dimension here is 600. The radius here would be 200. So that means this is 200. And this is as well as well 200. Okay, so this problem is not that simple. Okay. 
because uh, when we look, when we just look at it, it's actually statically indeterminated. So how can we make it statically determinated so that we can only use summation of forces and summation of moment equation? So in order to do that, what we're going to be, what we're going to do is to, let's say we remove these panels and we assume So let's say here, uh, assume statically determinated problem. So what does that mean? If we solve a problem in two dimensions, what is the total number of equations you can have for summation of forces? Will be summation of forces, summation of forces on the x and summation of forces in the y direction. So that's two. And then you can just take one moment equation about the z plane. So either in or out the, the page. So that means that you can have a maximum of three unknowns. Okay. So in order to do that, uh, let's see what we're going to be doing. We're going to assume that there's only going to be three members. So let's say one flange will be going from one to two. The flange will be going two, will go through three to four. And then from four to one. Okay. All right. So let's say, let's first solve load in flanges. Oops. Wrong one. Okay. So basically, What we're assuming here is that we have the following problem. We simplify initially this whole problem into this one. This one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. So we have one to two, then we have two to four and four to one. So basically, I assume this would be shear flow on the flange Q12, will be this long flange over here, will be Q12, so Q12, and then Q2, let's call this one, Q, you want to call it Q24, it's fine. And then we're going to call this one here Q41. So basically, these load flanges here will be resisting all the bending moments. Okay? So let's say uh, we're saying all three flanges. Resist all bending moments. Okay, and shear panels only effective in shear. Okay, so we'll have over here the Vy, and here we have the Vx. Oops. 
Okay, so we just said that we want the problem to be statically determined. So that means that the only equation we can use is summation of forces equal to zero and summation of moments equal to zero. So let's use summation of forces equal to zero and let's first do on the x direction. So if we look at this figure over here, the one I just did before, we need to add, this is 600, this is 200, 200, and 200. So what do you have on the x-direction? will be minus 600 Q12. So let's say we do this as reference frame x, y. So we'll have over here minus 600 Q12 on the other direction. And then we're going to have this one right here plus 600 Q24. Plus Vx, which is 12,000. Plus 12,000 equal to zero. So from this equation, what do we get? We're going to get that. Let's uh, move with this one. So we'll get. Q12 minus Q24 will be equal to what? So if you eliminate two zeros, will be 120 divided by 6 will be 20. So we have this, and this will be our first equation. So we have three unknowns. How many equations do we need? Three. So this will be the first one coming from summation of forces equal to zero in the x direction. Second equation will be on the y direction, which will give us y. So we come to this figure over here. So now on the y direction, we're gonna get, so we get uh, Vy, uh, Vy which is 8,000, okay? Dy is 8,000. So we look now at these members over here, this one, and what do we say about cross this one? So we'll get that um, plus, let's do the first one, plus 400Q41. And now we say that the average going through this will be equal to Vy divided by the height. And this one is going down, so minus four hundred. So the height over here. So the y, the force here is q to four. So the shear force q to four equal to zero. So this is going to give us over here that uh, we do the same thing as before. We keep this one positive, so we're going to move these ones to the other side. So we're going to get Q24 minus Q41 will be equal again to what? 80 divided by 4, so this is equal to 20 again. So this will be our equation. All right, so we need one more equation, which is going to be summation of moments equal to zero, and we take this way. So over here, I'm going to redo a figure very quick. We have this, 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 and this. This is one, two, three, 
and 4, so these are the three flanges we're taking, 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 1, and we have here 2 for 1, Q1, 2, Q2, 4, Twelve thousand and the eight thousand. All right. Okay. So from here, let's say we take the moments about point four, probably the easiest one. Okay, either point four or point one. Point three and four, three and two, would not be that easy, and you will see why. So we take summation about 0.4. All right, and let's see if I can retake that equation here. So the shear flow for here, for this one over here going around, was equal to 2AQ12. All right. So in this case, if we take the moment about Q4, what would be A? So we take A over here. Let's see what color can I use. A we actually be the projected area between the initial point, the final point. So we'll be all this here. A will be all that area over here. Okay. So we take moments about 0.4. Let's see what be the moments created by Q12 would be. 600, which is the length between 1 and 2, Q12, so this is the value of the force, will be the arm, the distance between 1 and 4, which is 400, and this moment will be clockwise or counterclockwise, will be counterclockwise, so will be positive. Now we need to look at the moment created by Q24. So this one, again, will be counterclockwise, so positive, so we have plus 2, and now we need to find the area. So what will be the area? It will be the area of the circle, or half the area of the circle, so pi r squared, which is 200 square, and it's only half of it, so we only did this part over here, plus this one, that will be what? 600 times 400. divided by 2, so basically all this term over here is A, the area A, and this is for Q24, and now the moment created, let's say, by the 12,000 will be what? Will be what? Will be clockwise, so it will be negative. 12,000, the value of the force, times 200, and the 8,000 force also create a positive uh, clockwise uh, moment, so it would be a negative moment, it would be minus 8,000 times 600, and this should be equal to zero. All right, so if we do some calculations over here, this is going to give us that so let's see, it will be six times four twenty four ten to the four q one two. Here we can cancel these two over here. So all this term, I did a calculation, gives you 365, let me check, let me double check, 365, 663.7061, Q24, and let's say, 
we move this one to the other side, we get what? 24 plus 48. So this would be 72, 10 to the 5. So we multiply the thing by 24 10 to the 10 to the 4th. We're going to get the third equation, which is Q12 plus 1.5236. Q to 4 equal to, so 72 divided by 24 will be 3, so this will be 30 by 30. So now we have our three equations with three unknowns, so three equations here, here, and here. Okay, three so equations, the three unknowns, Q12, Q24, and Q41. So we can solve. All right, so we have three equations and three unknowns. So we can solve. So the first thing we can do is actually take equation one and three. So we have what? Q12 minus Q24 equal to 20. And the other one is Q12 plus 1.5236. Three six Q to four equal to thirty. So if I subtract these two equations, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get minus two point five two. 36 Q to 4 that will be equal to 10. So if you solve for here, we can solve right away for Q to 4. Q to 4 will give you to be equal to, so 10 divided by this gives you approximately 3.96 newtons per millimeter. Okay. So now from the same equation, we get that Q12 will be equal to 20 plus Q24, which will give us Q12 equal to what, 23.96. Newtons per millimeter. Okay. So now we can just go and substitute uh, and uh, okay. Substituting into two. So let's see what is equation two. Equation two is over here, is Q24 minus Q41 equal to 20.
So this is going to give us that Q for one will be equal to Q to four minus 20. So it will be equal to 3.96 minus 20, which is going to give us that Q for one is equal to minus 16.04. Newton per millimeter. Okay, so something I like to do when, every time I get some results is to go back to the figure and and see what happens. So this is the problem that we had initially. We took this flange and this flange all the way here. Okay. So this is one, two, three, four, and now let's say if we put the other elements one, two, three, four, five, and six. I think we have no. So basically now if we look at this, what do we have? We have Q12 over here. That is positive and equal to 23.96. So okay, Q12 equal to 23.96 Newton per millimeter. Then here now we're gonna know what that Q23 will be equal to Q34. And this one, I hope also are positive. So this is the Q24 will be equal to 3.96 Newton per millimeter. But now we need to pay attention, this one is negative. Okay, so it was assumed to go up on the previous figure which is this one over here. Okay, so if it's negative, it means it actually goes down. So this will mean here, we have this. So this will mean that Q, for, uh, Q15 equal to Q54, and that would be equal to minus q41 okay which is the minus 16.04 but again I already put the sign on the arrow so don't change it again so this basically would be we know this and that makes sense because if this was going up this will mean that this structure could rotate so you need if this is going to produce this segment to move in that direction you need to have something to make the moment equal to zero okay because all these problems use these static equations. So summation of moment needs to be equal to zero. Summation of forces also needs to be equal to zero. All right, so here we found the forces on the flanges. One, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, and five, one. And if you want, we could do two, three, and two, five. Uh, but let's do that at the end, okay? I will do that at the end. I just want to follow the procedure. So next we're going to find the shear flows in panels 1, 2, and 3. Sixteen, so now we're going to find and uh, Shear flows in panels. We could have started with this, but uh, sorry, we could have started with this, but uh, I started by the other one because it was a little bit more complicated. So, again, over here, let me just redo a quick figure again. I might do it a bit bigger this time.
Okay. So we get here. Twelve thousand. It was eight thousand going up. Yeah. Eight thousand going up. And we say this was Q1 here. Q2. Q3. And we assume this one, so I think, let me double check so I don't change the direction. Let's see, the initial problem is right here, so it's to the right on top. Okay. okay, we have here one. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now just like in the previous problem, let's say we look at the flange one, five, four. So this means we have it here, one, five, four. One, five, four. You know this is 12,000, even though it should not affect anything in this case. Now we know that here we have Then we call that one Q15, Q54, and we know these are equal to 16.04, 16.04, and here we know we're going to have Q2, and here we're going to have Q3, okay? Share flows in panels, Q1. Q2 and Q3. Okay, so from the first one we find what? And we know this distance is 200 and 200, so we're going to get summation of forces on the right direction, which give us what? 200 Q2 plus 200 Q3 minus, we can just say, 400 times the 16.04 equal to zero. So this will give us the equation Q2 plus Q3 equal to 32.08 so let's say there would be our equation small a all right let's say now we're going to take the stiffener we need to find another relation between two and three so we can take stiffener six five or five six Stiffener 5, 6. We have here the 12,000. So this time, this, yes, it is important. Then here, if you look at the figure, we're going to have Q2 on top going in direction. And we're going to have Q3 at the bottom going in the direction. And we know that distance is 600. So in this case, if we do summation of forces on the X, 
what we're gonna get is um, 600 Q sub three minus 600 Q sub two plus 12,000 equal to zero. And this would give us what? Q2 minus Q3 to be equal to 20. So now you see that we can solve right away for Q2 and Q3 because we have two equations. So let's do that. So solving for Q2 and Q3. So let's see, we have the equations Q2 plus Q3 equal to 32.08 and Q2 minus Q3 equal to 20. Okay, so we can do as before. In this case, you can either uh, add or subtract. So let's say we add, make it different. So what do we get? We're going to get 2Q2. The Q sub 3 will cancel, will be equal to what? Will be equal to 52. 0 0.08 and from here you can solve by the way for q sub 2 will be equal to what so it's 26.04 newton per millimeter okay and from either one of these equations we can say and um, Let's say Q sub 3. So we use the 7 1, where the Q sub 3 would be equal to Q sub 2 minus 20, which would mean that Q sub 3 is just equal to 6.04 newtons per millimeter. Okay, so we only now need to find Q sub 1. Okay, so let us find Q sub 1. Okay, so for Q sub 1, we can take the stiffener 263, okay, that you see would be in relation of the other one. So we have Stiffener two six three. We have here two six and three. We know we have the eight thousand over here if we look at the figure that i have right here we have what we're gonna have q2 on this side we're gonna have q3 on this side i'm gonna have q1 on that side So this is going to give us, and we know this is 200, 200. So we do summations on the y direction, we're going to get, so 400 Q1 minus 200 Q2 minus 200 Q3 plus 
eight thousand equal to zero. So this is going to give us what that Q1 would be equal to 200 factor of Q2 plus Q3 minus 8,000 divided by 400. So I'm going to pause the video a second to do the calculation. Okay. Uh, okay, I don't want to make any mistake over here. Sorry for that. So, am I recording or not? I don't know. Okay, so let's just do it together. <laughs> I don't want to... So, Johnny, the way I would do this, I will open MATLAB. So, sorry for that, guys. So, actually, we know Q2 plus Q3 should be equal to 32.08. So, we can say 200 times 32.08. Oops. All right. So cancel. Uh, all right. Let's do it with a simple multiplication. So this would be 200 times 32.08 minus 8,000 divided by 400. We should give you Q1. So let's see what I can do with the calculations. Uh, I need to be able to pause this. So let's see now open this. Okay, guys. So actually, here we're going to get minus. 3.96 Newton per millimeter, but really it's very good we did it, but because it helps us to double check. If you remember from the previous problem, what is the stress of shear flow going on this one? It's also 3.96, where we assume what's going down and on this field what's going up, so we need to assume that it's on the opposite direction. Okay, so I think that's it for the problem.